Welcome to Introduction to Programming using C++. My name is Alex Louie. Today I'm going to be going over input and output using the stream operators uh, using CN and Cout. First thing for us to use CN and Cout, have to make sure that we have the header file IOStream. What this does is it allows us to use our CN and Cout objects with their corresponding operator so that we can either write output to the console or we can read output from the console. How do you write output to the console? Well, that's very easy. You can do C out and then you're going to have something called an insertion operator, which is the less and less than sign. And then after that, you can put any type of text that you would like. So for example, I can say hello world in double quotes and that tells me that this is a string that's going to be a literal string that's going to be printed out so if I put a semicolon after that and then I execute compile and run it's going to ask me to save you can say this is lecture test and there you go that's hello world that's printed out to make this a little bit neater we can use something called a output manipulator which we'll learn a little bit more in detail in the following lectures you can put another less than less than and type out a e n d l e n d l that stands for end line so what's going to happen is my output will now be formatted with an end line after i print out hello world if you notice every output is going to be married to a insertion operator what I mean by married is that this insertion operator is married by this hello world and then this insertion operator is married by this end line so if I do that as you can see there's gonna be a new line that's gonna be printed out which you don't see but vi visually you see that the next line now has press any key to continue with C out you can print out variables you can print out literals for example, I can print out a numeric literal. I can print out 50, 201 with an end line. And just as I was going over before, every insertion operator needs to be married to an output data, output data. In this particular case, 50, which is a numeric literal, is married to this insertion operator. 200 is married to this insertion operator and the number one is married to this insertion operator and finally n line is in married to this insertion operator so they all always come in pairs when we're doing uh, output and it's going to be similar with input if i run that now you see my hello world and you notice that even though i've spaced these out the compiler has no regard for us spacing it out in our syntax we have to literally put in a space for it to actually write it out and what I mean by that is if I close this up I need another married string with an insertion operator so I can say the following so now if I print this out this is gonna print out 50 right because this belongs to this insertion operator and this is gonna print out a space a literal space so then I can do the following And then if I write this out, you'll see 50, 200, and 1. Remember, the output data should always be married to its left-hand insertion operator so that everything has a pair. If you don't have a pair, then it's probably going to give you a syntax error. For example, if I do the following, I'm going to try and compile this. It's going to tell me, nope, can't do that because there's an uneven amount of pairs with data put this back should be fine and I run this again then I have 5201 if I declare a variable let's declare an integer variable call it data we'll call it int i data and I initialize i data with the value 20 I can also print this out using C out. So if I say C out I data and then I do an inline, okay, notice my inline is married to my this insertion operator and this 
variable is now married to this insertion operator. If I compile this, it'll print out the value of my data. And that's the actual number 20. With C out, you can also perform arithmetic operations. So if I was going to do 50 plus 20 end line, that's not going to print out this actual string. It's going to print out the result of what this is. So this will print out 70. If we count, let's comment these out. If I comment these out. then you have the number 70 because it evaluated the expression. So C out has the ability to evaluate expressions if you do any arithmetic operation. So if I do 50 times 20, should give me 1,000. So there's the 1,000. That's it about C out. Now let's go over C in. C in is used to read data into a variable. What that means is that it's different it's different from C out because if some C out you're just trying to present data to the console. C in you're trying to read data into your program and you have to store it somewhere and this somewhere is called a variable. In this particular case we've declared a variable called int i data and I can mix my C out and C in but we will see that in a little bit. I just want to show you how to C in variables. If I type in C in and greater than greater than i data what this ha again we have to make sure that our extraction operator is married to a variable this particular variable is married to this extraction operator if i run this what's going to happen is it's going to pause for input what's happening in the console window is it's saying, okay, I'm waiting for, because you have the CN statement here with an extraction operator, I'm waiting for you to type something in. Uh, as soon as I type something in and I press the key enter, it's going to take that input. In this particular case, I'm going to say 100. It'll take the input and assign it to the value, to the variable I data. You're not going to see anything because I haven't really printed the I data out. So let me give you an example of that. So now at this point, when I press enter and this executes, I data is going to have the value of 100. If I do C out I data and I do an end line here, print that out. What's going to happen is it's going to pause because it needs input. And if I type in 100, and it's also going to print it out because I just entered the value 100 into and it's stored it in I data. And then with my C out statement, I was able to print out what the value of the, of the variable was. So every variable should always have its own insert extraction operator, just as C out, it has its own insertion operator. Let's try and read two variables. So if I wanted to read two variables, we call this I data two. We can. If I do the following. With C in, there is a white space that you need to use so that we can skip and say, okay, after I see a white space, I'm going to stop reading data for I data and then see if I can read the next value for I data too. I'll show you an example. So in this particular case, it's waiting for data from I data. Okay. So if I type in let number 20, and at the moment I put a space, that means that now when I press, uh, when I enter the other data type, I mean the data value, so I'll enter 300. At this point, the extraction operator is going to ignore the space and say, well, the next value I know to read is uh, 300, which I'm going to store in iData2. The space is a delimiter. What that means is that it separates your input values if you have more than one. So if you have 20 space 300, your delimiter is a space and the compiler will say okay I know to store 20 into iData and 300 into iData2.
because it's delimiting by a space. Now if I press enter, you have 20 in iData. I didn't write out iData2, but I can do that. And I'm going to format it nicely. I will write a space out and a literal character space. And then I'm going to write iData2. And we have to make sure that everything is married to its insertion operator. So this goes with that. This goes with that. This goes with that. And this goes with that. So if I run this and I type in 20 space 300, you have that outputted. Now I couldn't I couldn't be able to see 2300 unless I actually use the see out statement, my see out object with its insertion operators, which inserts into the output stream. The other thing you can do is now you can prompt users for input. So I can say see out, please enter two numbers and press enter. Now, if I run this, it's going to write out my C out statement, but you see, you notice how it blocks. Now it's waiting for input. So every time you use a C in operator, it's going to wait for input so that you type in whatever you need to type in with the data type that it belongs to. So if I write in 20 and then space 90, now you know that if I press enter, then it's going to go to the next line, right? And execute this line here, which is going to write out 20 space 90 and then end line. There you go. Okay. So I hope you've learned a little bit about input and output. It's not that difficult. And we'll be using these uh, to further uh, expand our programming vocabulary. And obviously this is very important because the only way that we can write a program is by getting input from the user and obviously displaying the output to the user. Thank you very much and I'll see you on the next lecture.